أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Respected brothers and sisters, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We were discussing about the gates of paradise, Jannah. And we wish to be of those who are Ashabul Jannah, of those who enter Jannah, reside with the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Ahlul Bayt. Salawatullah wa salamu alayhim ajma'een. And we discussed that there is a hadith from the Holy Prophet whereby the eight gates of Jannah are mentioned. And each of the each of the gates, each of the gates have specific qualities, characteristics that a true person of Jannah needs to have in this world in order for him to enter Jannah. We're now on gate number three, Bab number three of Jannah, whereby it's mentioned on this Bab, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, Aliyun Waliullah, Likulli Shayin Hila, Wahila to Saha fi dunya, Arba'u Khisal. The Kalima is inscribed on the gate. Gate number three, as is inscribed on every single gate. And then it mentions that for everything, there is a means of attainment. And in order for us, for mankind, to attain a healthy life in this world, in dunya, there are four qualities they need to have. The first quality is Qillatul Kalam. Second quality is Qillatul Nawm. Qillatul Manam. Less sleep. Third is Qillatul Mashi. Less wanting, desire, wanting. And the fourth quality, Qillatul Ta'am. Less eating. It reminds me these four qualities, it reminds me of a story. And this story, I usually mention it to the young students in the madrasa, that one day, Bahlul, the great companion of the Ahlul Bayt, the great companion of our beloved sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq sallallahu wa sallamu one day, Bahlul, who acted insane in order for him to continue propagating the message of the Ahlul Bayt. He acted insane, although Bahlul himself was not insane. By his actions, he managed to spread the message and spread the teachings of the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt and be a true, a true muballigh, a true preacher of Islam and the truth. One day, Junaid al-Baghdadi meets Bahlul. And Junaid says, Bahlul, I wish you to teach me and inspire me. Bahlul says, look, I'm a majnoon, I'm an insane person, and you are an alim, you are a scholar. Junaid was a scholar. Go to someone else. Don't waste your time with me. Junaid says, no. Bahlul, I wish you to teach me. Again, Bahlul says, no. Who am I to teach you? You know that I'm majnoon, I'm insane. Bahlul, Junaid calls out, Bahlul, no. I wish you specifically to teach me and provide me with some advice, some mawa'adha. As I know, you are the closest person towards the Ahlul Bayt. You are a close associate, a close companion of the Imam, of the Ahlul Bayt. I wish you to provide me with some lessons. Bahlu says, look, I don't have much time, but I'm going to ask you three questions. If you manage to pass all these questions, then we'll progress. If not, then I'll move on and we'll move on. He says, okay, great. Now imagine a person who wishes to ask an alim 
questions and lessons and he wishes to test him. Bahlu says, the first question is, do you know how to talk? Junaid thinks, wow, what an easy question, how to talk? Of course, before I talk, I make sure no one else is speaking. When I talk, I make sure I talk in a low voice, in, an, in a nice audible voice. And when I talk, I make sure I'm looking at the person that I'm speaking to. And I make sure that when I'm talking, the other people are aware that I'm speaking to them. I'm speaking to them, uh, the words, and they can, pron they can hear what I'm saying. Bahlu looks at him, it seems uh, that you don't know how to speak. Let me move on to the second question. Second question, O oh, Junaid, do you know how to eat? Junaid thinks again, what an easy, simple question. Of course I know how to eat. Before I eat, I wash my hands. Before I start eating, I say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I take a pinch of salt. I eat. I make sure I eat in small pieces, small uh, pieces, small morsels, and I eat. I chew the food. And when I complete the food, I complete the uh, my meal, I say, Alhamdulillah. Again, Bahlul says, it seems you do not know how to eat. The third question, and I'll move on. Do you know how to sleep? Again, Junaid thinks this is a very simple question. Do I know how to sleep? Yes, before I sleep, I make sure I go to the bathroom. I make sure that I perform wudu. I make sure that I recite some dua some verses of the Qur'an and I go to sleep. Again, Bahlu looks down and says, it seems you do not know how to eat. You do not know how to speak and you don't know how to sleep and I'll move on. Junaid's thinking to himself, what's happened that Bahlu is saying that I do not know how to eat and I do not know how to sleep and I do not know how to talk? He runs and fetches Bahlu and says, Bahlu, Guide me, what's happened? Bahlu says, look, when I told you, do you know how to talk? You mentioned to me the exterior factors. That when you speak, you speak in a low voice. You make sure others don't speak. And you're speaking towards the person. These are secondary, O oh Junaid. The first and primary case is what you are saying. Is it haram or not? Is it ghibah or not? Are you lying or not? Are these words that are coming out from your self, are they to bring you closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? When I asked you, O oh Junaid, do you know how to eat? You informed me of the secondary factors, but the primary factor about eating is the food that you are eating, halal food or not? Do you have permission to eat this food or not? Do you have permission to sit in this gathering or not? Is it permissible to sit in this gathering where you're eating or not? Number two, the third thing when I mentioned about do you know how to sleep? You mentioned to me the secondary factors whilst you forgot the akhlaq matters that are prevalent, that are important and that are essential. For example, before one sleeps, Allah detests the one who has envy and hatred in his hearts towards his fellow brothers and sisters. One of the recommended acts before one sleeps is for one to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and forgiveness of the brothers and sisters. So we come back to the inscription on the gate of Jannah, the first inscription, Qillatul Kalam, speaking less. The hadith says, Khayrul Kalam, Khayrul Kalam, Ma Qalla wa Dal. The best of speech is the Speech which is short, little, and effective. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib 
so beautifully he mentions the parable of talking the parable of speaking he says talking and speaking speech is like a medicine qaliluhu yanfa' wa kathiruhu qatil a little of speech of talking is of benefit but speaking too much speaking too much is can be a killer can be a death qatil as if you're killing someone Hence, we are recommended to speak less, to talk less. And Rasulullah, he gave us a very key message. He said, when you notice that in a gathering, someone does not speak too much, he speaks little. Do not think something is bad about this person. Don't think that this person, there's something wrong with him. Why is he not speaking? Why is he speaking less? No. Rasulullah mentions that if you notice someone speaks a little, then fadnu min, go closer to him, approach him, be like him. Why? فَإِنَّهُ for that person has hikmah. It's a wise person. A wise person is the person who speaks a little and knows when to talk, how to talk, and what to say. Hence, this speech is so important that when Luqman himself, when he was asked to bring the most degrading, the worst thing of, of the animal, of, a, of an animal, Luqman, he brought the tongue and a heart after he sacrificed a sheep, he brought the tongue of a heart. The worst thing, the worst organs. Then after a few days, they asked him to bring the best organs of the sacrifice of the slaughtered animal. He again brought a tongue and the heart. They said, Luqman, the first day, you, the worst organs, you brought the tongue and the heart. Today, the best organs we ask for you, and you also bring the tongue and the heart. Luqman said, if one uses this heart and tongue, because they are connected, the heart and tongue, the heart and the, and the faculty to speak, the awareness to speak, then this can be the best of organs. If one knows how to speak correctly, speak nicely, this can be the best message that one can give, the best gift that one can give. But if one uses this heart and tongue in the worst manner, then it can be sharper than the sword. The sharpest of blades can hurt someone. A hurt, a bruise that can be very difficult to mend and recover from. Why? Because one spoke in the worst of manners. Hence, a wise, intelligent person, aqil, is the one who thinks before he speaks. And we are advised, before we speak, think. Even if it means that we have to think and think and rethink and then think, then speak. Then one should think before they speak. Rasulullah says that a beautiful person is known by his tongue, the way he speaks. Al-Jamalu fil-Lisan. And then he mentions Al-Lisan Mizanu al-Insan. Al-Lisan. So two parables are given, two hadiths are given by Rasulullah. That the tongue Al-Jamal fil lisan That a tongue, if, it's, if, if a person speaks well, you can say that this person is a beautiful person, is a nice person. And also, the scale, measurement of a good person or an evil person is with the tongue. There are many times we see someone, we think that they are the best person. 
the noble person, an honorable person. But when he speaks, and when we notice when he speaks, he abuses others, he hurts others, he swears at others, he curses others. That's when we know that that person is no longer what we thought. Hence, the hadith says, Al-mar makhbu'un taht al Man is known by the tongue he has, by the tongue he keeps. Amir al-Mu'min so beautifully says, Takallamu tu'arafu. Speak and you'll be known. Speak and you'll be recognized by others, by your speech. And when one speaks, it's best for them to speak less. A wise person speaks little and when they speak and when we speak, we should always speak those words that bring us closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll see you after this short break explaining further about the other three qualities that are needed for gate number three of Jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The second quality that is mentioned on gate number three of Jannah is Qillatul Manam, less sleeping. Hadith from Imam al Sadiq mentions that there are three things that Allah does not like in a person, in a mu'min, in a believer. One is oversleeping, too much sleeping. Second, too much laughing, and third, eating after the stomach is full. Here we are mentioning and talking about the sleeping. Now, nowhere do you notice that Islam says that one should not sleep. No, in fact, sleeping is beneficial. Sleeping is good for the body. Sleeping is a requirement, it's an essential uh, requirement of the body that one needs to rest, one needs to relax, and one needs to, for a period of time, the whole body needs to rest. However, there is a second kind of sleep which is detested, and that is the sleep which is lazy sleep. Sleep, idle sleeping, oversleeping, the limit that one should sleep, one's recommended, certain uh, doctors, physicians have mentioned the average sleep of a, of a healthy person is between six to eight hours. Now some people they may sleep less than these six hours, but one should not oversleep. And one should think to themselves, my life, I am wasting it in sleeping. Rather my life, I need to ensure that my life, I am using it in the best of ways. This gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided me, this body, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created mankind in the best of forms. Am I making the best opportunity of this life that has given to me? Hadith from Amir al-Mu'min states that كَثْرَةُ النَّوْمِ Oversleeping, sleeping too much, excessive sleeping, takes away from religion and world. You would never find the most successful person in the world, in any business, you won't find the most successful person being the one who's been sleeping all his life. And you won't find the most religious person being the one who's been sleeping too much. No. A person who is active, a person who is working hard, a person who is healthy, a person who is 
uh, praying, a person who is performing all the ibadat, all the acts of worship, this person is known as a healthy, successful, true man, true woman, true mu'min, true mu'mina, true dedicated believer. Kathratul nawm, kathratul manam is something that we should avoid. And when it comes to sleeping, there are etiquettes of sleeping recommendations of sleep. One, we mentioned that one should not oversleep. Secondly, is before one sleep, one should be in tahara. One is recommended to be pure, clean. Also, it's recommended to be in wudu, to have wudu before one sleeps, to perform wudu. Rasulullah, he asked the companions, which of you recites ibadah, recites dua, Qur'an is involved in ibadah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single night. Salman, he, the great companion Salman, he places his hands up. He mentioned that, Ya Rasulullah, I. Other companions looked at Rasulullah and said, Ya, how is it possible for Salman to be awake every night or be involved in ibadah every night? Rasulullah asked Salman to explain, he said, Ya Rasulullah, before I sleep every night, I perform wudu. And the hadith from the Holy Prophet mentions that one who sleeps, and before he sleeps performs wudu, that whole night that he is in that mode of sleeping, that he is sleeping, that whole night, it's as if that night he is spent in ibadah, in worship. Anything else which is recommended while sleeping? It is recommended for one to place their right side or towards the Qibla, facing the Qibla. And it's highly disliked for one to sleep on their stomach. Nawma to shayateen. One to sleep on their stomach. It's recommended before one sleeps to recite dua. Short du'as, istighfar, seeking repentance and forgiveness, and recite Qur'an. And one who recites Qur'an, one who recites Surah Al-Mubarakat Al-Fatiha for the Mu'mineen, it's as if they have gifted thawab of two-thirds of the Qur'an. And one who recites one Surah Al-Tawheed, it's as if one's gifted one-third of the Qur'an. So, one can recite Surah Al-Mubarakat Al-Fatiha and Surah Al-Mubarakat Al-Tawheed and has gifted for the Marhumin, for the Mu'minin and Mu'minat the thawab of one whole Surah of the Qur'an. One whole Qur'an recitation. What else is recommended? It's recommended, highly recommended for one to perform accountability, al muhasaba before they sleep. The hadith mentions man lam yuhasab nafsah falaysa minna. One who does not account themselves is not of us, the Ahlul Bayt. What does account accounting oneself mean? That before they sleep, one should think how many good deeds did I perform today? How can I improve on those good deeds and increase my hasanat? How many sins did I perform today? God forbid we perform sins that cause the wrath of Allah, that distance us from Allah. Those sins, think about them and ask Allah for true repentance. And think during the accountability stage, how can I distance myself from such a sin? What shall I avoid? Who shall I avoid? Where shall I no longer go? Muhasaba, accountability. The third quality that is mentioned on this gate, gate number three, is qillatul mash, less wanting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every single human being the faculty of desire. One has desire, desire for food, Desire to play games, desire to play sports, 
desire to study. Desire, we have desires. But we also have an aql, an intellect. And a true, true wise person is the one who uses their intellect to control their desires. And a person who is far, far from the from the sense of a man, from the from a sense of human beings, from a true human being, from a true quality of a human being, from a true characteristic of a person, of a human being, is the one who his desires control him. Whatever his desire tells him, he goes towards. Whatever the desires pull him, he goes towards that. And this is wrong. And this is animalistic behavior. Animals have no intellect, wherever their desires take them. Even if it's somewhere wrong, they go towards it. But us human beings, Allah has given us the faculty of human aql, intellect, and we must always control our desires. Ensure that the desire that we have, that is used in the right way, in the halal way. The fourth quality that is mentioned is قِلَّةُ الطعام, Less eating. One of the recommendations from the Ahlul Bayt is eat less. Eat less. Never have they said never eat. But the Ahlul Bayt state that one should eat less. And a beautiful statement from Amir al muminin And the Hadith states that one should not extend their hands towards the food if they are already full. In fact, it will be makruh. It's disliked. The Ahl al-Bayt have given us recommendations. For example, Imam Ali states that eating a little is a sign of self-restraint. One who controls their desires. But eating too much, eating excessively, is a sign of wastefulness. Allah mentions in the Holy Quran, "Kulu washrabu wala tusufu." Eat and drink, but do not be wasteful. Do not overeat. Do not overdrink. And when it comes to eating, there are etiquettes of eating. We need to be of true. Muslims who follow the path of the Qur'an, the path of the Ahlul Bayt. And remember, Islam is the most perfect way of life. And every aspect of Islam is perfect. Islam has given us guidelines how to eat. And there is a very beautiful hadith from our beloved Imam Al-Mushtaba, Imam Hassan alayhi afdalu salatu wassalam, who mentions 12 etiquettes of eating. He mentions that there are 12 things that every Muslim should know about table manners. Four are mandatory. Four are requirements necessary for us. What are they? He says that we should always, when we start to eat, we should say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Basmala. When we start before we eat, we should also have knowledge of the food, ilm of the food. Is this food halal? Is it okay? Is it permissible for me to eat it? Have knowledge of the food. Number three is we should offer thanks. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given and provided and gifted us with food. One else, one other of the four, four requirements is one should have content, one should be content. Not just thankful, one should be radi, rada, and content with the food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided them. The other requirements, recommended requirements of table manners is one to wash their hands. Even some recommendations have wudu before they eat. 
is to eat in small chunks, small, small pieces, small morsels. To sit towards the ones on one's left side, so towards their friends, to eat in small pieces with their fingers, recommended, for example. And the general manners of eating is to take pieces of food from the places which are close towards you, not to run towards the other side, fetching their hands, to take small bites, to chew the food well, and look less at people's face while eating. One should not look at others whilst they're eating. Rather, they should be content and look at their own food and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the fourth quality characteristic for us to live a healthy life in this world, in this dunya, is qillatu ta'am, is to eat less. The four qualities as a reminder for a person, for a believer on the day of judgment and they'll see on the third gate of Jannah for us to live a healthy life. One should follow these four qualities, healthy life in this world, sleep less, talk less, have less desires and wants and to eat less. We'll see you in the next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.